It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And I am with Mallory and Mel today in Coronado and we are doing a first time maintenance on a project that was installed a couple of years ago. And I'm very, very pleased with the plants. Everything looks great, but we've got a lot of crab rat, crab grass, say that three times fast. So, I mean, take a look at what great condition the plants are in. Basically, you know, nothing has been done with the succulents. This client still has retained her, her grass, which I'm working on it, people, I'm working on it. Um, so a lot of this Heinz 57, as I call it, crabgrass and whatnot has moved into our installation. So you can see that we need to do, you know, remove some spent blooms, and pull a lot of weeds. Now, I'm not gonna treat any of this with pesticide, or, or I'm sorry, with herbicide because of the proximity to the plants. So we're gonna go after this the old fashioned way and just dig all of these out by the roots. I tell you, there is nothing more satisfying than that. This um, aloe striata is done, see? It had a beautiful orange bloom spike and now all of the, all of the flowers have died. So in this case, you wanna just take the bloom down as low as you can and you're done. This plant will come back. It is not a monocarpic plant. So you will get new blooms next year from this girl. She's also thrown off a really beautiful pup and this might be removed and staged somewhere else depending on what we find. Um, you can see here we've got some Alstroemeria that came up in the garden. Some of those little fun bulby kind of things I let ride. Just depends on, on how they look. Uh, over here, this is an Aeonium Herbicum. This mom bloomed right on out and see how dead looking that is. So again, I'm gonna take this all the way down to the base and remove. Oh my gosh, seriously, so gratifying. And then remember how I've taught you how to work around barrel cactus? You take your shovel and you lift the whole cactus up, remove the weeds, and then put the barrel cactus back. Easy. This Hebe, this was a bush that was removed when we put in the succulents and I am gonna take it out. Perhaps we can rehome it somewhere in her backyard because it does not make sense with succulents. And the Tirocali sticks on fire. Very carefully, whenever I do a maintenance, I will dig those out, cut off the roots, and reset as cuttings because these can get as big as an SUV in no time at all, and I don't want it taking over the world. So, well, that's just a maintenance issue. We'll cut and reset. The Aeonium sunbursts love Coronado. This is an Arboretum. This is an Aeonium that grows on a trunk some people do not like the look of the trunks on the plants but in this case because we are working into summer i'm hesitant to cut and reset the aeoniums despite the fact that we are in the land of milk and honey they could still burn so i think i will just let these aeoniums ride since they are working their way into summer dormancy i'm sorry i am having such a hard time focusing because i just I desperately want to tear into this this is just the most exciting thing in the world to me because I know what it's going to look like when we're done and it is going to be gorgeous. Okay, so, you know, all through here, I don't see, I don't see any pests, I don't see any disease, I don't see any problems other than just spent blooms and weeds. So, you know, this is just going to tighten right up. I've got three quarter inch burgundy lava rock top dressing, which I'm going to go to Southwest Boulder and Stone and grab a few more bags of this to fill in in some areas. Uh, back here, just imagine how the lawn would look without lawn, right? Uh, I'll work on her. Um, ah, this Vaquaria McDooglii is looking spectacular. Very, very happy with how that's growing. It's kind of our thriller in this spot. Jeez, look at these Aeonium sunbursts. Stunning. Perii. Rum runner. Uh, she really, really loves the ruchia. So I brought a few more of those for us to tuck in hither and thither. Uh, remember, you want to wait until you're done doing all of your maintenance before you add additional plants. It's like you don't, 
you know, you don't ice the cake before it's baked. So, um, slow your roll. Uh, huh, Mangave Jaguar Blooms. Not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, this is going to get cut down as well. We'll go down as far as we can. And many of you have asked me, well, is this a monocarpic plant? You know, will it die? No, it won't. She's going to keep on, you know, spreading and throwing off pups. It is an otherwise very, very healthy plant. See here, this is another bloom coming from the mangave. And oh, look at that. We have scale. See those little orangish doohickeys on the back of the leaf that are kind of stuck. That's hard scale. And I noticed it because of the ants that I see crawling all over the plant. Ants vector this insect. So they are working together to bring the scale to the plant. So we'll want to definitely remove that by either treating it with an insecticidal soap, giving it a really hard blast of the hose, removing blooms because insects tend to like the tender new growth a lot you know, and just see what we can do. Um, we planted some bromeliads in here thinking, you know, Coronado, marine layer, they would do really well. And, you know, in some cases they did, and in some cases they didn't. So the ones that are doing well, we will leave, and the ones that aren't, we'll take out. I don't even remember what was in here, but I don't know, guys. I think it's dead. Um, ooh. Kalanchoe luciae. Some of these do really well and some don't. And this is a case obviously where the luciae is not really in a very happy spot. This is what I call a pouting plant. Cause look, it's not dead. There's a lot of new baby growth. So I will remove these nasty looking pieces and just leave this baby growth exposed and we will hope for the best there. I'll probably add another little plant you know, to kind of give it a little something, something. Uh, this is also the time when you're seeing a lot of spider webs. Now, you know, be gentle about that as I just knock the spider web off the plant because spiders are friends of the garden and they do eat a lot. They're beneficial and they do eat a lot of the bugs that we don't like. Oh dear. And then there's this poor Echeveria that is, <laughs> um, look at that. I mean, it literally was, it's been laying on its side like that for God knows how long and still it survives. Isn't that amazing? So we'll clean up all of this and do a little reset and see if we can't get some more life out of that plant. Uh, la la la. Yeah. So, Ooh, look at all of this mealy bug, this white sticky stuff. That's mealy bug and mealy bug can take out a plant. I have never seen such an infestation of mealybug on an aeonium before. I don't think that there's a lot of air circulation along the side of the house, which is probably why that plant weakened and got infested, but not to worry. I think at this stage we can save it just by blasting it with some insecticidal soap or the hose. Uh, I think it'll be all right. So one more. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Over here we have a beautiful fountain, some Sansevieria. There's some more bromeliads that are looking a little dried out over there. Those really need to be watered from the top in their cups. And Greg sets the irrigation with micro sprayers to try to accommodate that, but it's not always successful. So that's a plant that I tend to use very sparingly. This Bacarnia recurvata or ponytail palm, we're going to limb this up a lot to expose more of the trunk. I think it's really going to make this area look a lot better. Now, here's a study and a lesson in microclimates. This is a shadier side of the house and everything is doing so much better than it was on the other side where we just looked where it gets a lot more sun. You know, these aeoniums, Sansevieria, Wow, look at this bromeliad, it's on fire. The mangave, the little sunburst. Yeah, everything looks amazing over here on this side, very lush. So just a little grooming here and we'll be good to go. So 
that's my story. This is what a couple of years with no maintenance looks like in Coronado, California. And uh, we're gonna tear in. stuff around it. Okay, then just set it back in. It took Mallory, Mel, and I about five and a half hours, and that included me leaving the site to buy 15 bags of three-quarter inch rock and a lunch break. So, you know, not bad for just two times a year, which is what we are going to do here at this property. We went with trowels and we dug all of the Bermuda grass out as best we could from the roots. It really wasn't that big of a deal and it was extremely rewarding. Then when we got done, I popped in a couple of new plants. I put six one gallon uh, variety of plants in here, just little graptocetums and some more ruchia that the client really likes. I was able to hit the mealybug and the aphids with the hose very successfully so we got rid of those without having to use any pesticides and you saw how quickly we were able to relieve this barrel cactus uh, of its weeds you just dig it out clean it up and put it back honestly the most rewarding thing so this is early days with this garden it's just a couple of years in you know, so at some point we might have to move some things around, but for now and for the next few years, I think we're going to be in really great shape. A lot of this garden is watered by the sprinklers that water the lawn. Um, we don't have much um, underground irrigation going in here at all. You will also remember that we dug up the sticks on fire, cut pieces, pretty pieces off, and restuck the pretty pieces in the ground so that we can keep these under control. I love the texture, I love the color. I do not love its root system once it gets its legs. <laughs> oh God. Okay, so Ma Mallory did a beautiful job here of resetting these Aeonium Kiwi too. Now be careful those of you that are inland or in areas where it gets really, really hot in the summer, you won't wanna mess with Aeoniums at this time of the year. But here in Coronado, this is the shady side. Oh, that's another thing too. This side of the yard struggled a little bit more than this side did. Uh, that goes with the back as well. So, you know, microclimates are everything. Pay attention to those things. 
When you have a plant that's pouting, my recommendation is to move it somewhere into a new microclimate. It will amaze you with its resurgence. Uh, in here, you know, more of the same. This didn't take nearly as long up here, but I did limb up the Bacarnia recurvata dramatically. That was very, very fun. So we're gonna start to expose some of its caudex down there at the bottom, which is really pretty. Bought three quarter inch black lava as well as some bags of burgundy and just, you know, there was a lot of grass clippings and stuff in the rocks. So we just freshened it up everywhere. Isn't this the most gorgeous rock? And with these Aeonium silk, well, these aren't silk, or are they? It's hard to tell. I think maybe they are. Uh, they're going a little bit dormant, but oh my gosh, the way they're hanging over that rock just makes my heart happy. And this incredible bromeliad that is, looks like we threw paint on it. The jaguars are super happy back here. The Sansevieria and bromeliads are happy. Actually, everything's happy back here. So super pleased. No issues to report in here of any kind. These plants in the back were, are looking just a little thirsty. So I gave them some extra water, the Sansevieria and the Crassulas. They were looking a little shrivelly and very, very stressed. So I'm going to encourage the homeowner to come out once a month and just kind of give those a somewhat of a deep soak. I think they'll be very appreciative of that. This area is magic. Woo wee. Look at this. Graptopetalum superbum. This is one of my favorite succulents. It is an absolute jewel in the garden. The leaves are a bit delicate, but it is just unparalleled in beauty. We did decide to go ahead and remove, well, obviously we're going to remove the dead plant that was in this pot, but this aloe vera was over next to the porch. So we replaced that with a Crassula undulata and put the aloe vera in this pot. Now I know that this, this plant is as common as dirt, but isn't it beautiful as a specimen? It's just a one-off. I just think that's so pretty. It looks so gorgeous in that pot too. Just absolutely magic. And it, it gives kind of a delineation you know as we turn the corner we're moving into a new microclimate so that kind of sets the tone and then over here this looks amazing we really didn't have to do a whole lot but you can see the sun is shining right now on this side and it's probably going to struggle a little bit as the days get hotter this summer but once again with a little extra irrigation support I think all will be well so this was a fun five and a half hours. I hope you all enjoyed the journey. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions and stay tuned. We have a very exciting announcement coming up. We have a new campaign. Um, just a little spoiler, spoiler alert. Happy Pride Month, everybody. This has been Laura Eubanks reporting for Mallory and Mel in Coronado with your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.